welcome members of intact welcome friends of intact to our program in what is a 39th year in intact's eventful journey warm welcome to mr venkatraman the speaker of this evening we at intact chennai chapter are delighted today to collaborate with ashwitas who are graciously hosting this event many of you who regularly attend our programs would be familiar with intact but as my duty to those who are not familiar i will introduce intact briefly intact is an acronym for the indian national trust for art and cultural heritage intact was established in 1984 39 years ago as a not for profit organization with a mission to conserve heritage this is based on the belief that living in harmony with heritage enhances quality of life as stated in the constitution of india article 51 af it shall be the duty of every citizen of india to value and preserve the rich heritage of our composite culture our aim as volunteers is to preserve and conserve our unprotected heritage inculcate a sense of pride in our heritage in the younger generation bring heritage education to the forefront to ensure concern for heritage in future care for our natural environment our lakes our forests our water bodies care for our built environment our monuments and landmarks by initiating their conservation keep alive our living heritage and support traditional communities crafts and arts including folk art over 200 chapters of intact nationwide work very hard just through the passion and strength of volunteers to take intact's vision forward at chennai chapter we have through talks programs and initiatives been creating awareness about the significance of different aspects of our heritage i take this opportunity to invite those who are here to become members in case you are not one already and please join in this mission to serve our heritage and preserve it for our children grandchildren great grandchildren and in turn their progeny in our generation we are mere custodians of what we have inherited from our ancestors to preserve protect and hand over to our next generation now for a brief note about our speaker mr venkat's interest in visual arts began 51 years ago after being gifted his uncle rk lakshman's cartoons venkat hails from a family of playwrights editors artists and writers notably rk narayan and rk lakshman while in sishya school in the 8th grade he was a member of the photography club later venkat's focus shifted to sound and electronics which became his main profession till 1991 his true calling lay in visual arts and he returned to photography full time combined with print design in 1998 during a photo research assignment in chennai's gindi national park the forest officials admiringly called him puchi venkat to mark his dedication in documenting the creepy crawlies in 2017 he released his first book insects guardians of nature published by kalam kriya which is a compilation of 25 years of his nature macro photographs venkat's deep concern for heritage and conservation has led him to document tribal groups in madhya pradesh rice varieties in tamil nadu microfauna of parambikulam wildlife sanctuary restoration and preservation of photographs and prints as well as designing museums and interpretation centers Pooch Venkat's latest venture is creating abstract expressionist art based on the hues of the natural world. Working with traditional media as well as with digital platforms, he has held three solo exhibitions where photography and art have melded to create a unique perspective on the world of macro photography. Presently Venkat is a faculty in the Viscom department of MOP Vaishnav College Chennai. Pooch Venkat will now present some of the images that he had curated and restored out of 3000 frames from Ian Manning's collection of priceless photographs of Indian railways and the anecdotes connected to the images he will now let us sit back and enjoy the ride thank the floor is all yours venkat thank you so much uh, divakar okay so rather than me doing the talking uh, so 
one of my hands is completely tied with the mic and the other is tied with the remote. So I can't uh, expostulate or show too much of bhava and you know all the nityas. So I'll try my best to present it. And uh, as the slides go, you will realize what exactly you're going to look at and uh, hope that you can all enjoy the presentation. Okay, so can we just change uh, the lighting? Dr. Okay, not right now. I'll tell you when to start. Just sit back and enjoy. Uh, I will, this is sort of a mixed presentation. There is going to be audio, there is going to be video clips, and there is going to be the, the ubiquitous PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> All the three. And uh, so I hope you enjoy this uh, first bit. But before that, I just like to add that it is amazing that I am standing in front of an audience because every time I come for Intax programs, it is such a fantastic series of programs, so meaningful. They call the best people on the stage. I said, someday I'm going to be standing there. And uh, so quite uh, almost pandemic, uh, I hope I can also talk in Tamil, I mean bilingual. Sujata, uh, Devakar, all of us, we were just discussing, I have this fantastic collection of uh, photographs we should do. They said, see if you can get the presentation going. That was before the pandemic. <laughs> now, finally, I'm on the stage and the presentation is on. So let's begin with... Okay, so that entire series of very familiar audio clips lasted exactly 1 minute 15 seconds, but it took you back so many years. Now, that is the magic of history and heritage. So, uh, I'm planning to have a separate presentation on uh, Indian Railways, so I'm not delving too much into the history of Indian Railways as such. Okay, from here, can we just uh, overlight off on it? If we can turn the other light down, you'll get a better view on that. And when I tell you, please switch the lights on again, Sriya, so, yeah, then we can continue. Uh, I think this is brilliant. Okay, so when you, sir, on the light, you uh, Okay, I, I think I know how it feels to be in the spotlight. Okay, I conduct these classes to all my students say spotlight na na thirima, snoot light na na thirima, abdin kya Now I think I am, okay, good. Okay, as long as it's not, uh, it's quite clear, right? Excellent. Okay, so when you talk about Indian railways, the first picture that you're all been fed all the time is this picture. And they say this is the very first train that ran in India, 1853. The great Thane to Mumbai, Bori Bandha, uh, then three locomotives, this, that, 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 1853. A huge amount of, uh, I'm saying it with a lot of humor, indoctrination that the first railway line came 
between Mumbai and Thane. Nothing could be further from the truth. The first railway line came between Chintadri Pet and Red Hills. More than 30 years before the first railway line came in, I'm not going to say further because there's a very fun thing here. If you think government agencies are very lax in their work and you know very procrastinating, it originated with the British. They gave us a lot of things including procrastination. So what actually happened was, uh, the British, the only reason they came in is obviously for trade. And uh, they wanted to get into the hinterland and then move all the goods towards the port. And they found that the horse-drawn carts were notoriously slow and the soil around uh, the Madras area was so poor that uh, they got caught in the slush all the time. That's how the area is. So finally what happens, they said, no, this can't go on, we need to do something. So they scouted around, found places where uh, there are lots of hills. Chennai, as of today, doesn't have any shortage of hills. And uh, finally, Red Hills area, what in Tamil we call Chenkundram, that's where some of the best rocks were found. And I'll tell you a small story about the other type of rocks that you find here. Then what happens, they said that, okay, why don't we run an experimental railway line to see if we can bring those rocks onto the center part where, I mean, that's near Fort St. George, because we need to start building roads. That's the only way we are going to get into the land. And so, the first railway line was laid between Chintadri Pet and Red Hills. Uh, we, are, we found the location of Chintadri Pet, but I'm still trying to find the location. I have been to Red Hills quite often. The only thing I find is the Pural Jail. I don't see anything else. And <laughs> I have a funny feeling that Pural Jail, Kadila, if you go, you might still find that uh, foundation. And uh, then what happens? A railway line is laid, and uh, these uh, carts are hastily converted into rail wagons. They put those flanged wheels there. They bring the horses and they find that the horses are not interested in that load any longer because they're completely loaded with rocks. So they decided this can't go on. So who do they turn to? The very famous friend of India, enemy of the British, Sir Arthur Cotton, whom we call Cotton Durai. And uh, we know how much he contributed to the Rajmandri area in Dhaulishwaram especially. So Arthur Cotton actually had made these engines to help the plowing and to help the the land fertility over there. So he modified this type of a steam engine to become a railway engine, what we call the locomotive. Unfortunately, we don't have a picture of that. Uh, I managed to get a picture of this. And it's very similar to this. The best part about these engines is there is no need for coal firing. They just loaded the steam inside and the boiler was so beautifully designed that the steam pressure could last for six hours. That is Arthur Cotton's uh, magic. So Arthur Cotton came in. He designed the first locomotive, and that was hauling the train from uh, Red Hills to Chintadri Pet to Red Hills to Chintadri Pet. And guess what they did with all those rocks? Any guesses? Anyway, I'll tell you because I'm very eager to give you the answer also. You can see I'm quite enthusiastic in that. Uh, Mount Road was the result. So Mount Road was created from the rocks of Chinkundram. And in fact, one thing we should have all done, I'm no regretting it, you know, when the metro rail was being done, maybe I could have gone and asked them, you guys have been digging quite a number of feet down the ground. Can you just find any traces of that particular red laterite that is there? Unfortunately, it didn't strike us to go. They would have gladly, you know, told us, you please go and look into the rubble. But that didn't happen. So that is exactly Mount Road. If you really dig right down to the bedrock, you will find Senkundram's base over there. That's how they did that. So. Now that the railway line is established, and they said, fine, India, Madras can actually run trains. Can you believe how they talked? And look at today. So then what happens? They said, yes, but every, all the permissions have to be sent to England. And in those days, ships, no Suez Canal. And so you had only uh, eight months. Every time a letter was sent, it used to take eight months to go to England, one month for them to break their heads over it or take no action on it. And eight months for the answer to come back, that we are not taking any action on it. This is exactly what happened. They proposed a railway line, and the British just sat on it, and they said, we are not interested. Now what happens, because of that, a bit of trade starts dropping. But the cotton trade around the Bombay area builds up. So they want a railway line there. That was the reason why they built the railway line that side. And it was no passenger. They basically wanted the workers to come from inside to the port so that they could carry the load. That is all their intention was. 
slave trade as we like to call it in a very humorous way so the british in britain refused to take any action because they said no we are not going to pay money on this because there is no proof that this can no return on investment so this roi return investment uh, 200 years ago itself it was there in everybody's mind it is not a new f- new thing done by the bankers so because of the procrastination of the british in britain we lost being the first railway line in india that uh, that accolade went to mumbai so this is exactly the kind of engine and uh, then what happens i'm just going to fast forward because i like i said i would like to give a separate presentation on indian railways where i'll give you the complete history of every single thing that developed and what is still there so then what happens i fast forward almost 200 years to around uh, 1959 i also have an interview with uh, professor manning himself which i'm going to play for you so you can listen to it from like they say the horse's mouth so uh, manning comes in and uh, he passes through india as a young boy of about 15 or 14 and uh, it holds his heart forever and believe it or not he is today he is 82 right and every 6 months he visits india and he doesn't tell anybody he is visiting india he just comes and he can speak tamil better than you and me he just goes local and said kya kya nagar ko ticket kode that's exactly how he talks and we actually took him around chennai and he was able to convince the auto guy for a lower fare than what i could and i consider myself a hard boiled chennaiite and i said oops this australian guy comes and makes me look like a fool and uh, nobody was more surprised than the auto guy himself so jani can you just play that uh, no wait wait not yet i think i'll have to go through the tree chennai is when we start that right yeah okay so what we do is i'll show you a few pictures and then i'll play the video so manning passes through india in 1959 and uh, ever the photographer he carries a camera with him and uh, some of the first pictures he himself has taken and that was the you know the darjeeling uh, small train and this picture i will be talking about conservation of how i did this a little later but this is 1959 that's delhi for you can't imagine delhi looking like this but what is interesting in those days is right from the beginning the british were very clear when they laid the railway lines it was purely for profit and uh, all of you know about broad gauge meter gauge narrow gauge th- they are all there we'll talk about that later uh they started with broad gauge so there was no doubt in the mind of the british that we are going to exploit the land and the larger the gauge the larger the train sitting on it the more amount of material i can push out so while the rest of the colonies around the world by the british had the standard gauge of 4 foot 8 inch india was the only country that had a 5 foot 6 inch that is about as tall as me so when i lie down on the track it's right across so no i haven't got suicidal thoughts yet uh, i haven't done that so far but i found that i could fit in if i ever had that idea so you can see it's a broad gauge right there and that was what surprised everybody across the world they said my god these guys came in and they all praised i said do you want to know the truth Shh, let's not talk about that okay and he also took some brilliant historical photographs and some of these monuments that he has taken across india including all sculptures down south are most amazing but because this talk is more about railways i'm not really bringing that up some of the most iconic pictures he's taken without realizing he was doing anything and uh, this place doesn't look like this anymore but just look at that you have a cow you have this right under the shade two fellows sitting perfect way india was that many years back and we're talking about 60 years ago 50 70 right 1959 maybe and that's him as a young boy uh he obviously he doesn't look like that <laughs> he doesn't look like i'll show you a photograph of him now and uh, you just see how high their pants are okay nowadays we try to lower it more and more okay but there it was higher and higher so you can clearly see look at this look at this this was their local guide this was their uh, taxi man and that's him and he's wearing a tie to boot everything my god that's how it was and i wondered how hot the place was you know so and uh, he was an archivist even in those days so how i enjoyed working on it is because every single frame on those 3000 negatives was meticulously noted down and there you can see that 59 jaipur fatehpur sikri agra tehran this is only the top of the list below this every single frame he would write what it is so uh, i was uh, yes sir this one Uh, i'm sorry sir i'm not i no no thanks for asking but this proves that i hated history thanks to my teacher in school 
So I'm, if, if you're all able to identify it, I'll be most happy to have your... No, no, this is all North India. He never came South. Dr. Manning... No, no, see, that's what I'm saying. This most probably would be Delhi, I think, because Delhi was completely filled with a lot of Sikhs. I think, but you're welcome to tell me where it is, because I, I didn't really bother to ask him so much because we were concentrating on more on railways. And uh, he's getting old, so his memory is also fading. And he's not able to remember half the places that he took. So luckily, he had noted down everything. That is the archiving basic instinct that he had. So you can see March 59, that is how old the... the and this, he still keeps it very carefully. Okay, now I'm going to play the video where I have his interview. And then we will continue with the rest. So now, before you play the video, when I heard that he started off in 1965, which one? 1965. This was his first, that's why I said, you're absolutely right, that's why I said beginning at Madras. All this time, he had never crossed the Vindhyas, because you know that crossing the Vindhyas is supposed to be the most significant thing for anybody in India. He never crossed the Vindhyas down south. But the history of how he came to Chennai is there in the interview. It, it's absolutely really fun to listen to the two people who are going to be talking on that. So 1965, what? Okay, can we have the questions later? Yes, yes. Thank you, Devakar. Yes. So when I said 1965, I said, oh my gosh, I was born that year. And this man is already walking around with the camera. And little did I know that so many years later, I will be processing and preserving those pictures. I think the circle is complete, actually. Okay. I first came in uh, 1959 when my father had his long service leave and uh, which meant he had six months on full pay and so he went we went around the world by air and uh, our first stop was bangkok and our second stop was Kolkata, and then we stopped at Bagdogra. and my first ride on an indian train was the darjeeling line up the hill oh. so first ride narrow gauge then we flew to delhi and uh, I got managed to get a ride out to Jaipur, so second ride meter gauge, and only after from Agra to um, to Delhi was broad gauge. So I did narrow first, but anyway, then meter, then, the then, then meter, then broad, and uh, then of course we went on to other countries. Uh, then I became uh, I did an undergraduate degree at Melbourne University. I graduated in. End of '63, I was, and then of course the question was what to do next. And so my uh, my contemporaries were, uh, you know, those who wanted to be big professors were already working out where to go. In uh, okay. and so uh, one of them went to London, and other ones went to US. And I said, oh, why don't I split the difference? I will go to India. And so uh, I wrote off, and. Um, one, uh, one Indian college replied, that was Christian College in Kamaram. I'm Dalin Devanesan, and I'm really happy to meet uh, Yun Manning today. Yun Manning came to India because of my father. My father, Dr. Chandran Devanesan, was the first Indian principal of Madras Christian College. And when Yun Manning wrote a letter saying that he wanted to come to India, it was sent to my father, who promptly invited him to come and join as a staff member in Madras Christian College. And uh, which year would that have been? 65. And don't forget to say it was your mother that welcomed me. Yes. My His mother was a real character. Yeah. I mean, a, a saintly one, actually. She's very well known for looking after lots and lots of guests, but especially those from overseas. His mother, but, uh, you know, she was the welcomer of foreigners. Is it? Manning had no culture shock. <laughs> Strangely, I landed up in Australia later, <laughs> and all this might have been part of the linkages, getting to know people like Ian Manning. With my father, I had a nervous breakdown working in a small rural hospital in Nagari, and my father said, get out of India so that you can uh, think about the meaning of life. And the first place that came to his mind was Australia. And I don't know, maybe meeting Ian Manning influenced that. Those four years, I arrived at, uh, in um, April, no, uh, March actually, 69, 
and I left in, uh, sorry, in, Ma in 65, arrived in 65 and then left in May 69. And uh, what enthused you to go around taking these pictures? You had your classes, you had your lessons. Well, obviously, uh, I had my classes and all of that, but uh, I also had annual leave, which meant that I oh. saw a lot of uh, India in April, late April, May, oh. early June. Uh, so it was not the tourist season. And, uh, uh, and then, of course, in South, I uh, could take, uh, sometimes I could uh, hop on, um, you know, the Trivandrum Express or um, Boat Mail, one of those trains, and uh, go out to uh, you know, a place like Karakal or to uh, uh, Karakudi. Um, and then, uh, so I'd be uh, one night out, stay there, and one night back on the uh, Trivandrum passenger, quite likely, from my Um And so to, I did a number of um, the shots around uh, Tamil Nadu were, um, even up as far as Bangalore, were done by uh, essentially just night out, night back. You, did you plan your routes, or did you just take it on, on the run, I mean, on the fly? Partly, I would take it on the spur of the moment. But of course, as soon as um, he saw what I was doing, Siva Ramakrishnan made up these itineraries. He was a demonstrator. He'd just finished um, uh, BSc, and he, he was a demonstrator in chemistry. Okay. And uh, so he and I took to, uh, got to travelling together. And uh, he, of course, would make up these itineraries that would involve changing trains at midnight in half the junctions of North India. I think I only ever succeeded in keeping up with one of his itineraries for two weeks. And then I started to lose time or miss trains or get too sleepy. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, which camera did you prefer for these type of pictures? I only had one camera, oh. and that was a Retina 35mm Kodak. And I had that as far as Gwalia, when oh. it got stolen. Oh. Uh, yes, well, I was silly. I put, put it above me on the luggage rack instead of opposite, uh, in the bag. And then, um, so, then you find I, uh, I went off to the nearest camera shop and bought an Agfa clack. Oh. So you will see that there are a few negatives from uh, Calcutta and places which are little square ones. That was yeah. from a, a, a box brownie sort of thing. Oh. And then I got a, uh, managed to get a second-hand Voigtlander, a 35 mil, which uh, the remainder of the uh, India shots were taken on. And then so, just tell us a bit about the Voigtlander. Well, it took off from Palavram Yard. OK, uh, before he talks about the second part, uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about the port line and then you can understand. So, what Manning is uh, talking to you about is there was a small railway line starting from what is now Thirusalam station and going up the Thirusalam hill, not Pallavaram hill. And uh, goes right around the hill, goes to the backside, and uh, there used to be a little shed which I remember seeing as a child so many years back. We always wondered what it was. And uh, then Manning tells us exactly what that shed was. And he remembers the train going up the hill and then coming down again. And uh, that's why when he suddenly said port line, why was it called the port line is because which he, he said, you already know that, so why should I explain it? That's why he doesn't explain that part. Port line is essentially that line joined the main line at where Thirusalam station is now. And it took the material, which I will tell you about in a little while, all the way to the Chennai port. And uh, for, you know what, <laughs> it's for export. So that's what the port line was. It's a very nice sounding name, the port line. So I wish it was there in existence now. Yeah, okay, can we continue? Just, uh, yeah, turn We had a, uh, an engine turn. shed and a run round loop, which was just uh, very close to that uh, Christian cemetery, just a little bit further up the hill. And then it went curved around on a low embankment to uh, the gap in the hills and uh, 
I don't know exactly how far further it went on to a, a quarry up there where the Port Trust uh, quarried chartakite in order to uh, uh, have uh, big rocks to uh, put on its, uh, on its breakwaters. Thank you. Uh, let's just get back to the presentation. Yeah, just go to that. Shift F6. Yeah. Okay, so thanks for watching that along. And uh, so uh, now you know what the port line is. And what they did was to quarry the rock there and uh, take it all the way to, uh, let us say, the port. And from there, either export it or put it as breakwaters. So actually, Apavai, when the degradation of that uh, coastline started during the British, because by putting the breakwaters in the Tirvathur area, they started accumulating sand in south, and we are still suffering from that, actually. Sir, can I have that light off? Because I will continue with the presentation. A light on, sir. Thank you so much. OK, so we, we begin with 1965. I'll run through this, and I'll show you the very first picture that was taken by Manning. And uh, most of you can guess where it is. If you can't guess it, no problem, because I have a good series of pictures I'll show you at the end, and you'll, you'll enjoy what it is. So uh, he begins taking these pictures. And what happens is that, uh, as usual, you know, 1965, he actually, Manning told me that you are a good presenter, so you better tell the rest of the story. I can't talk about everything. So what happens is that he gets, uh, you know, he gets invited by Chandran Devanesan, so he arrives there all looking foreign. It was 1965, the Pakistan-India war. And so any foreigner was looked upon with suspicion. And any foreigner with a camera, more so. Any foreigner with a camera in a railway station, even more so. Any foreigner with a camera in a railway station taking pictures, that was the end of the story. So what happens, he takes out his camera out of instinct because he loves trains. And he still loves trains at the age of 83. And uh, then starts shooting. Suddenly, he finds people as, you know, giving him suspicious looks. But one young boy, he claims that he didn't even come up to his waist, tugged at his shirt and said, Enaya pandra. That small boy says, Enaya pandra. And he, he just looks at this small, tiny creature there and says, like, who are you to tell me anything? And he gets scared because everybody's looking at him. Then walks in Shivaramakrishnan, whose picture you saw with the mop. And Shivaramakrishnan had just completed his bachelor's, and uh, he was a demonstrator in the chemistry lab. So with a big smile, he said, uh, you, then something happens and he says, Sivram Krishna was able to find out that I'm actually the new employee of uh, Madras Christian College. The one interesting addition to this information is Prakash Karat, everybody knows him for all the wrong reasons. Prakash Karat, the politician, was Manning's student in MCC. So Manning says he was the only person who respected Manning. And uh, he said, M Prakash didn't respect any other faculty. He says, he's the, I'm the only person he did because I let him say whatever he wanted in class. So <laughs> that's what it was. So Manning has taught some of the actual important people in India, in MCC. So what happens, this is the famous shot, uh, the very first shot that he's taken from top there. That is Tambaram Station for you, actually. And then the crowd is always there, if you can just check. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, light one up because that is actually completely going off in the quality. Okay. Can you, yeah, so sorry about that. But uh, what I thought I'll do is I'll give you the presentation so you can please add it to the video. Okay, now what happens, the crowd is always there for you to see this. And you can see that this is the passenger train that's coming from Vandalur to uh, this thing, what do you call, uh, Tambaram. And it's already full of people. Can you see that? And uh, if you look very carefully at the picture, you know that the train is not moving because half of them are standing down near the track. And that was what we call a single line section where one track and only one train at a time can go through. So this had to wait until the platform was clear before it moved in. And so you can imagine the crowd there, and I think it still continues. It hasn't changed. And uh, you see, what you need to be looking at in Manning's pictures are not just the trains. How did Madras look when it was still Madras? When it was still the Madras presidency, 
and Tamil Nadu had actually not yet been formed. Because Tamil Nadu formed only in 69. This was predating that. So I would still call it the Madras presidency. That's why I've included pictures that are not strictly Madras by itself, because he went all, all around the place. And uh, so this was an interesting area near the barracks in Egmore of the police. So if you look very carefully, you can see the famous you know, police half pant, which, which can accommodate even an elephant inside it. Okay, that's how big it was. Why I said that was because I was in scouts and guides, I became the group captain. Because I became the group captain, I had to unfortunately set a disciplinarian attitude towards all my people. And I had to wear that crazy looking shorts. So I know what ignominy it was for me. So <laughs> I can well imagine how it was. And these are actually the railway locomotives that are made by Telco, Tata Engineering Locomotive Company. So this is the beginning of Telco's foray into a national level manufacture. This is one of the first. And Telco did a marvelous job. Everywhere you would see it says Tata, the famous logo. And I'm sure many of you remember this. The nice thing about this was the name Janata Express. And it had a lovely board in front, proudly proclaiming what train it was. And uh, this was a really whacked out train because it used to stop at all the stations. The windows did not have the bars, so people could just jump into the window. And uh, God help you if you're a window seater. Okay, you'll find all sorts of people say, oh, Talia, na ulla varno. I said, there's a door. I, I remember going to Madurai in this train. And so that's exactly how it was. And uh, so that's exactly where it's tugging, and you can recognize this part of it. Senjo, what, what is this? Which cathedral is this? St. Andrew's Kirk, exactly, correct. Okay, so you can see the British spelling of Trivalur. But the interesting part is, the, these locomotives were experimental locomotives made by the British that were given to the southern line. And uh, if you notice, there are no electric lines here. And the first electric line came, of course, that is Indian Railways, but I have to add this, that the first electric lines came between Chennai and Vilpuram for the meter gauge. And here is a fantastic fact which I have to add here because Manning's photographs show it so well. I'll come to that when I change the slide. I'll bring this picture back of Trivalor with another context in a, in a few minutes. So you can see the scene here. And this is your famous Tambaram station with people stand. Just look at that. The casual attitude like this. As you say, no that way. But if you notice, there's an electric line there. And the best part is only in India, only between Chennai Beach and Virupuram, we had the electric meter gauge line nowhere else in the world. The reason was because British used India as a testing bed. Everything new, anything new, let's test it in India. If it is applicable here, or rather, if it works in India, it will work for the rest of the world. So every single new thing was invented and made for India, especially this locomotive that you see that looks like a cute box. You can see one in the National Rail Museum and another one in Tambaram near the, let's say, near the station when you go on the main road. Now, this particular locomotive used to operate on batteries also. So they used to have a battery box that was trailing behind it. So in case the power failed, it could pull the coach into the platform. And it is nowhere else in the world. And uh, Manning is the only person who has got it actually working. Nobody has seen this working at all. And when I saw these pictures, I said, I actually fainted. I said, he's actually got that working picture. He's actually got the working picture. I was jumping. And uh, so this was the first set of pictures that I processed, which I'll tell you about. So this is the meter gauge direct current locomotive. OK, anybody who wants to know direct current and alternative current, I'll talk about it later. Let's keep physics out of this, if you don't mind. There it is again. So these are all extremely rare pictures of the electric around Chennai, which was only found in India, in Chennai, and nowhere else in the world. That is the uniqueness about this. So look at this, that fantastic box. And this door was open because, as usual, Chennai was very hot. And you know, the driver could actually stand here and drive. And if, if a friend wanted a lift from Tambaram to a nearby station, he just hops on to this, holds it like that, and just Appa, one shayre, I've been slow down, and he just jumps off. So that used to happen quite often. And you can see them leaning out here. And you see the way this train is coming. You see the way that train is coming. You see that part? I put all this together to show you some of the rarest pictures which Manning has taken, because this is nowhere else in the world. Uh, you can guess where this is, but this picture will come back again. So this is from the Pallavaram Hill. 
and this small locomotive is carrying such a big train with three coaches such a big train with just three coaches okay that was the passenger between beach and tambaram and it used to go after everybody left to the office where the workers used to go to the different railway sections so this used to take them there and now that my dear friends is the chennai airport okay so i'm going to show you another couple of pictures of the chennai airport and this is the great grand southern trunk road look at that that's how it was and now comes an interesting part here so if you notice these electric trains some of us do remember this and we would have traveled in it as children what has happened is this particular type of electric train saw the maximum variation in chennai so every time a new design was there the british used to say come 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 give it to us we will try it out we will try it out and uh, your alstom which makes all the latest locomotives today originated in this in breda in the netherlands what is alstom today this is the company that made it original alstom and so this is one design you have other designs so every new design whether it's direct current or alternating current this is the place where it was tried out first so manning has managed to capture quite a few variations that is everybody was amazed just to add a little bit if you ever go to central railway station please go to platform 3 4 5 and 6 and you will see these pictures up on the wall there and uh, so the railways are very kind in saying that please give the pictures we would like to honor him and you go there you will find all those pictures in very large sizes put all over the platforms i think that's a very nice gesture by the railways you see this is a different design now this is a different design this is a different design that's the famous pallavaram hill this tree still exists that banyan tree on top is still there or tamil la vandu kudumi nu solluvom so that is the kudumi hill as we used to call it in those days how many of you remember going by that bus i remember getting stuck in my school days with that bus and it it was a tata bus by the way manning is a great bus fan so he's got a huge number of bus pictures maybe we'll have a presentation on buses later so i remember cursing myself when this bus came because ella mafasal vandi idu nagarave nagarade and things like that and you look at the way he's captured it beautiful absolutely bus going in full span he used to tell me when he went by cycle the bus drivers had an evil plan of knocking the cyclist out of the road or they used to come charging down the road in full speed when they come very close to the cyclist they will go off like this so the cyclist has to jump off the bike and fall on the road side and the bus driver apparently used to have a good laugh over it because he apparently used to stop put his head out and see whether you have really fallen and then he will continue to drive the bus so manning says i see that bus i feel like really throwing a stone at it but that's what it is this mixed picture gives you a beautiful idea of the friendship that the trains had with the locals so apparently this locomotive goes to the platform to pick up the train and he sees people walking so he waits there until they all reach the platform and then he moves in and the joke goes that sometimes why did you why did you take so long to bring the engine sir adedo sari illa sir adedo sariya vaala sai illa sir i was trying to start it and that is how there's a beautiful friendship going on between the people because all of them are taking the train to go to various parts you see the dresses they are wearing beautiful dresses in those days okay that's how it was and that's a beautiful scene towards vandalur can you believe vandalur was like this that's how vandalur looked <laughs> 60 years back lovely beautiful big trees nice water lovely hills and the train going cutting across the whole thing look at the scene with the uh, ubiquitous buffalo right there and the train coming through and the crowd as usual just look at the trees and you see the this big uh, this thing was the trench basically to prevent the buffaloes from crossing the track and apparently the farmers loved it because they said sir maadu vandu tholayada sir adu and the side e povadu enga area kulliya da okandirukom so manning used to actually talk to these people are you feeling with he said no this is good because those things don't even venture that side but it's a beautiful picture of the train coming through and uh, lovely sight what a fantastic scene you know that maatvandi indavandi actually this is not even a maatvandi can you guess what this was people jatka exactly now the fun part here is manning saw this beautiful small steam locomotive and he said oh this is going to start i have to go running after it i have to capture it so he takes a cycle clicks this picture at vandalur station and starts cycling towards tambaram he goes to tambaram station and finds this is nowhere in sight and he says oh my gosh it's gone already he looks to the left and to the right i am describing it soon i look to the left and i look to the right and this guy was nowhere in sight then i asked him sir what happened he never even started from vandalur <laughs> so apparently uh, what has happened is 
without telling anybody, too many people got in. And the engine just didn't start. So apparently the guard had to come and shoo everybody out exactly like what we do today. Yo, area, yay, nah. And all those things. Finally, about almost about 20, 30 people had to be offloaded. Only then this thing started chugging. And he says, I just waste, wasted my time there waiting for this thing to come. And he's got other photographs of this, which, I, which I'll show it to you later uh, in a different presentation. There is an entire series of pictures of this train trying to struggle its way into Tambaram. He's taken a good series of pictures there. Any, any guesses where this is? I'm asking the question. I'll tell you the answer anyway. You'll be very surprised. OK, I'm too eager to give you the answer. It is Chandalpet. How you can find out is very simple. I'll give you the clues. One is, I told you that this is a meter gauge. You can see by the width of the track. Electrified. Can you believe it? Central station was not electrified until very recently. Everybody thinks one day Bharat, this Bharat, that India, everything is running. Sorry, this one got the electrification. Central did not have the electrification at all. So you will not find any wires there. You'll only find steam locomotives and diesels. But this was electrified. So this was the beach Chengalpet passenger, which has just arrived. And you see the small hills over there? They are the hills of Paranur. OK, so this is the line that goes next to Kolavai Lake. So this was the scene in Chengalpet. And uh, Pondicherry Station? OK, how many of you remember an old cigarette brand called Passing Show? Fantastic, yes. Hat. And he used to have, he had the monocle, Kannadi. Purple color, exactly. Perfect, perfect, yes. Like a joker, exactly. So that, that orange and purple, the orange and purple was a very, very, I remembered buying that cigarette packet. And uh, my mom said, hey, you not a cigarette packet. I said, no, I think I was born to be a designer because I love that color combination. So in front of my mother, just to prove to her that I like the design, what I did was I threw the cigarette out, kept the bag, and then said, ah, OK, nalladu. I remember that cigar in his mouth, exactly. So if you look very carefully, you can see the words passing show. Of course, it's not may not be very clear. You can see it in my laptop. It says passing show there. Though that shows very clearly which era this picture was taken. And look at the beautiful way in which uh, the, the cycle richer fellow is waiting there for you. And the clues of finding out where this is. It says Ali. You know how old this picture is. And if you take a look at all the names, platform number two, number four, number three, number five, you can clearly find out where this is. Perfectly right. Trichy, Enga. Ponmalai. Brilliant, yes. If this were a quiz, you would have got it. Correct. You don't need to call a friend, you know. No problem. So this is Ponmalai. And you see the locos standing there, the meter gauge steam, which was ready to take people from this platform to that platform. And love the way this chap is just sitting there waiting for the train. That is what he captured. He captured that human element without realizing that it is part of the whole process. After all, what's a train without humans? Just look at this amazing picture of the three portlies. And the best part is, this engine driver is actually, you know what he was doing? Manning told me that he was actually calling them. Ma, where are you going? Come, come. This is 29C bus. Ma, where are you going? Come, come. Come, come. Come, come. That is how informal and friendly the whole railway system was. They used to call and say, where are you going? Come. So these people, are waiting there, whether this train will take us there, whether or not, can we talk to the driver? Is he a strange creature inside that huge uh, belching monster of a firecracker? You know? And this is, you can see the Tata there, and this is Kodakarnal Road Station. One of the, just look at the number of trees, the plants, look at how very picturesque it is. And uh, this gives a terror. And the angle in which he's covered it is so beautiful that you can see this, you can see the train coming. That was a natural instinct to get that frame, that artistic frame. Now, there is a very nice technical thing that I want to tell you about this. So here, what happens is, if you notice in all the other locomotives that you might have been subliminally noticing, you'll see only three wheels and bigger. But this one has got four wheels which are smaller. Notice. Now, the smaller the wheels, the more rough the ride will be. The larger the wheels, more smoother, but the smaller the wheel, more grip and more traction. The larger the wheel, less traction, but more smooth ride. So when I did a little bit of research on this kind of locomotive, and you notice, look at the size of the window. It's very large. So you have to see down at the. The reason was, apparently, this had such a good grip. This was specially made by the British Vulcan foundry and shipped to India to work on the Shengota Poonalur guard section. So this one used to go in front. This used to push at the back. And this is happening today. 
okay this is happening today where you have a, a banking locomotive is one that pushes the train from the back which you'll find when you go from uh, mumbai to pune as it climbs you'll find the locomotive at the back pushing the train so this is the banking locomotive that's why it's got four wheels which are smaller in diameter to give that solid grip which one yeah nilgiri mountain railway is only a single locomotive so we don't call it a banking locomotive okay because it's a single end banking means there is one in the front one at the back that's what we call a traditional banking system and so this is exactly why it has got four four wheels and look at the size so that the driver can actually see if everything is working properly and the grip that's what is speciality about this and uh, a lovely picture of the signals this is just there this chap has actually got down to ask the driver are we going to start or not what's going on a fantastic story about this so you see the driver actually reversing the train this is at karekal when manning went there to photograph he was told hey photo la edugada ni foreigner inna seira so manning uh, what he say couldn't go there the next day he tried something else apparently that that driver was same guy was there so manning takes uh, but this is going to sound a little humorous okay he takes a mug of water you know for what you can see that chap sitting over there you know what he's doing so manning pretended he is going to go to what to say toilet and so he was holding his he tells me you know i held my back like this and i held that thing secretly my camera was there and he didn't see the camera he thought i was going to the toilet so he turned the other way and i took my camera out instead of the toilet and i took the picture and i ran so that is how innovative sometimes photographers have to be and that's why he started turning at the back and he took this fantastic photograph this is what you found in the poster which all of you would have got right look at the beautiful smoke and then the way this thing was reversed the goats and one lone signal there look at that composition when you talk about one lone signal this picture shows you a lot this is the entrance to mana madurai that junction because it's a junction you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 signals so mana madurai was a much larger junction in the old days than what you see today because that is the only way you could get to rameswaram the only entry point to rameswaram karaikudi coming from karaikudi going to thootukudi every place through mana madurai okay now we come closer to our city can you guess where this is a hint there is no electric line there is no electric poles where do you think this is well you are getting close uh, okay but not exactly it's a station that's even more historical royapuram exactly this is royapuram you can make out by that big bridge over there and it had that lone signal here's the next photo look at that this clearly tells you it's royapuram it's heading towards chennai madras is this side and that side is washerman pet because the building comes on the right side so this is exactly what the, just look at the beautiful way he's taken the picture and you see there is no electric line there that was the unique part chennai central and all those places didn't have electricity electric traction and here is a hint the main line in which this train is standing has no electric lines but you see the electric line there at the background so this is a dead giveaway which station had one half of it not electrified another half was electrified which station was that not egmore because egmore was fully electrified beach exactly the beach station section had the meter gauge there electrified and the broad gauge was not electrified here so that's the difference and anybody can read that can tell you tell me what station this is arakkonam exactly this is arakkonam can you believe arakkonam look like this today it's complete uh, chaos nobody knows which way which train is going and suddenly vande bharat will come and say hey na ulla vandirukken ellarum verattu vande bharat na vandena nobody else should come and vande bharat goes zooming through and everybody else is waiting say sikra po sikra po i we need to go also poor shatabdi has lost its charm now <laughs> it's gone <laughs> okay but arakkonam was so beautifully peaceful in the old days and uh, believe bangalore looked like this at one point of time with that uh, this is this is the passenger train that's coming from arsikare and going this side it has just entered the bangalore city station area okay this is the platform 1 that is there uh, that is the view actually and uh, a very familiar station can you guess what it is if you look carefully it says bangarpet okay bangarpet but i want to attract your attention to one thing very interesting do you see that small hill over there you are able to see that hill it's not a small hill it's actually yelagiri okay now if you can see yelagiri from bangarpet can you imagine how clear the atmosphere was in the old days you could actually see yelagiri hill from bangarpet station 
and that is how clear the weather was so when i saw this i scratched my head and said is there something pro something wrong with the negative i looked at the negative i put it through a microscope then i realized it was actually the photograph and then i checked the cross section next time i went that side i took a photograph and i realized that it is the same hill and then it was proved that it was actually jolarpet area so that's how clear the and in this station you had the narrow gauge train going towards uh, uh, what to say kolar the broad gauge going towards chennai both there is kolar for you okay just see that beautiful side there kolar with the narrow gauge standing over there and uh, if you look very closely look at the meticulous way in which you no know, i'll just show you a larger picture of this you just see how meticulously he has noted down everything every single frame was written down and i told him what kind of a pen did you have that you could write like this and then he tells me actually the interesting part was he processed and processed all the negatives inside his room in madras christian college so as a offshoot of the developing liquid he created his own ink and his own pen also okay then he started writing with that so he said this is very specifically developer liquid i said wow that is even more strange so you can see perth colombo and look at the spelling pallavaram okay that is the spelling pallavaram manamadurai kodai road and you can see 389 you see the date 45665 so it's a dream for an archivist like me to get all that information out an entire history is lying inside this here is another one this is just a smaller one this was uh, he had written the details of where he processed the picture which studio it was what film it was everything is written over here typed out neatly after writing by hand <laughs> okay now i'll just tell you a little bit about the cleaning process now we are sort of coming to the end of the presentation i have one very interesting video to show you uh, after this so the cleaning process is you know when we start doing uh, processing and cleaning uh, in the old days when an, uh, when a conservator works they have a physical item to conserve that's a big challenge because the weather conditions the original material is it properly doable but thanks to digital technology today you don't have to completely rely on that creative process you can digitize and then you can completely bring it back to normal like what it was before you can also take a print and uh, i have my friend mr narsimhan here and i have got a few prints also so when we finish the presentation please take a look at the prints of the same pictures and you'll see the quality of the restoration that is possible thanks to digital technology today so the cleaning process is this is how the negative starts so this is the negative you can all understand that and this is how it is badly discolored okay if you can ask me how can a black and white negative discolor no how can black and white actually it does because there's a fungal attack and the fungus actually puts its own pigments on to the substrate so it becomes a little pinkish greenish that's exactly what happened here finally what happens when you start doing the process this is how it begins it's got a crazy green color but today if i open instagram it actually gives me this color and says do you want to use this filter and people are saying it romba nalla irukke inda filter podunga i said this is what i spent all my life trying to remove and now they are saying that this is a filter on instagram wow then i'm wondering na edhukku conservation pandra apdi uttralam ketta do special effect nu solliduvom simple okay this is the first round of conservation the second round will be getting it to the black and white now the third step i hope uh, the projector will be able to show you the improvement is this see the difference this is original this is cleaned so this gives the contrast and when you see this on the print i hope it is there you will see the improvement in the printing and you will be amazed at what digital technology can help you with in conservation and preservation let's go to the next one uh, i'm sure most of you won't agree with me on what i did but don't worry the original is preserved well i didn't change it too much in photoshop okay <laughs> okay see first thing is this ugliness here so chennai was full of these things even in those days okay in our the for the sere the all those things then you have that line there and you have a lot of marks here like you see these spots and all that of course the lower resolution of the projector may not show everything that's perfectly fine but this is clearly noticeable you see what i did completely removed it okay it's gone back to how the land so today just to share a joke with you cmda wants me to do this very often because they want to show people how good that land was and we did it for pallikarne we did it for adiyar creek to show them how good it was they said sir ipo da sir innu nalla irukku i said okay idhuk mela we can't talk to them so we totally cleaned it up okay but i hope that they won't expect us to clean this up like this all over chennai and we removed all the spots improved it so this is the next step in the cleaning process 
Uh, you can see all those spots there. Okay, quite a few. Everything got cleaned out. Okay, completely gone. Then take a look at all these spots here. And uh, I have to admit that one of my students came around asking me, sir, the original Naladana Irke, Abde Vachita, it gives that old world charm. I said, yo, now foreign da the clean bandar They said, no, 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 keep it, it looks very nice. It gives that old world effect. Today you have filters that add this sort of marks on top of the picture. So it's hilarious. Now this is the one that's completely cleaned up. Okay, which one? Ma'am, uh, I would rather not uh, say Photoshop simply because Photoshop poor fellows. Adobe Lavandi, Adyo Nanchinde, he invented that software. He never realized that this is what we'll be doing with it. But uh, Photoshop can be used for good things also. Okay, so we can actually do this. And uh, yeah, then comes the dress code, which is one of the last ones before we go to the, the PS the resistance. Okay, that's what I'm waiting for. So take a look at the dress codes that he captured. Look at this. Look at the dresses. And if it is white on white, it means he's a railway official. Okay, they wanted to show how good they are. But they, don't, they didn't realize that they'll, it gets dirty with everyday use. Okay, look at this. I'm sorry. Yeah, but here there's a very funny thing and fun thing that I want all of you to notice. Gender equality was very well practiced in the old days. Okay, look at these fellows carrying all this on the heads. And the suit of the half pan potate, talela kodata vachite, he's happily walking home. The lady is happily sitting over here with a hand like this and said, Naya. So that is how general equality was 60 years back. I don't know where it disappeared. Hopefully it's all coming back. <laughs> Lovely. And look at the small boy here. And here is the ticket checker. So you can see by the British hat and you can see by the white on white. So see the way the dresses are. Look at this. The parallel pants. Okay. Can you see that? There's the parallel pants. Look at this. All the completely mixed dresses. Can you see that? Completely mixed dresses. Bell bottoms, okay, complete bell bottoms. So this is this is exactly how the style was. And uh, for those of you who have worn this, like I have worn this, I can't believe that I actually wore this. And I expected people to actually like me. And I remember wearing a pink colored pant. My dear students, please don't laugh. Your master has actually done all these weird things in life. A pink pant and green shirt, okay. This is not the green shirt, by the way. So look at this. And he has captured him in mid-stride. That's what I like best. So it actually gave the you know shape of the pant when he stuck the leg out. That was there. Look at this. Look at that and look at this lady. So that kundal was very long. It had to reach right down to your ankles or knees. That's how it was. And that uh, engine driver there with the mundas on the head. Okay, now we come to his uh, family. Now, this is the fun part, okay. Sivaramakrishnan was the person working in MCC. And by the way, uh, he, uh, what to say, Manning taught economics. That's what he was doing in uh, this thing, right? So, he's the one who planned all the trips for Manning. And Manning became so integrated into uh, Sivaramakrishnan's family. I'm just going to share a, an anecdote uh, at the end of this. That's the parents. And you can see how Manning was way back in the 60s. And uh, that's, that's the young daughter, and that's the missus. And wait, let's go to the next picture. Uh, look at this kuti all dressed up for the photograph. Okay, And you can see the railway line at the back. There was no walls. There's Manning and the kuti. Now this kuti girl is a grandmother now. And they live in KK Nagar. I had the pleasure of meeting them. They're still very much around. And Manning quietly comes every six months to Chennai to spend almost 15 days with them in the house. And he, Manning gets in, start wearing a banyan, or a veshti banyan, and happily is relaxing there with a cup of coffee. I said, who's more South Indian? My God, I can't believe it. I'm wearing a shirt and pant. This guy is relaxing there. That's how he's talking there. And he quietly comes and goes. And of course, he misses Sivaramakrishnan who passed away. And so Manning is very much part of the family. So he quietly keeps coming and going every six months. So we never know about it, even now. So that's a little girl who was a grandmother and she is come and stood in front of me and said, I know you. And then she said, how? I said, the photograph. So no, we don't miss. Okay, now comes the best part of my presentation. Not best, of course, everything was good, I hope. We did an excellent exercise with the MOP Vaishnav Viscom students. And I uh, got permission from the railways to do a very interesting project where we selected about 15 to 20 of Manning's pictures. 
we went to the same locations, tried to get the same angle with the same camera, not the same camera, the same lens for the angle of coverage, and we tried to get the pictures. I'm just showing a few of them to you, okay, which I think was significant uh, in the difference. So let's begin with this famous picture that I all showed you. This is, this I would consider as Manning's first picture. Now from the same viewpoint, I'll show you the key. If you're able to see, of course, in the projector, you may not be able to see it well. There is uh, Pallavaram Hill can be seen in the background. You can all come and see it later if you want in my laptop. You have that water tank there and the, that engine being turned around by just four people. From the same location, about a year ago, is this. That's how the place has changed. You still have the hill at the same location. In fact, I used the same lens to get the same angle of coverage. Okay, this is, this is how it is from the same place. Okay, uh, well, I'll go back again because this I consider a very significant picture. This is how Thambaram was, and this is how it is today. Then comes the other end of Thambaram towards Vandalur. So this is that uh, express, you know, roaring with all majesty and kicking up the dust and, you know, people walking there. It's a blistering three o'clock in the afternoon. So what we did, we also tried to match the time in which he has taken the picture. So I had to call, I had to write to Manning again and ask him. He Then you know what he tells me? Puchi, you're a photographer. By looking at the angle of the light, you should be able to see. Then I said, sir, most of your pictures are cloudy, sir. He said, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't know that. I said, yes, I've already seen it. So I sent him small thumbnails of the pictures and he was able to identify the time because he still remembers the time when he took the pictures. So we tried to simulate it and as luck would have it, it was cloudy for us also. So <laughs> it didn't make any difference. Okay, that's the view. That's the same angle. If you say, look at this picture, you can see Vandalur Hill over there, you know, Vandalur Hill. But uh, here, this bridge is uh, sort of blocked. The hill is still at the back. You can still see the hill clearly. So this is the same location, same place. Now that famous symmetry from which that port line took off. Now the port line, uh, let me tell you a small story about people who are interested in geology. We have one of the rarest rocks in the world, which is the Charnokite. And it is named after Job Charnock, who was in Fort St. George and was sent by the East India Company to look at Calcutta as a possible place for a second branch of East India Company opening. So Job Charnock is considered the founder of Calcutta. And he started his career in Fort St. George. So all the Calcutta people must owe their existence to Chennai. I'm very proud about that. So if any Bengali friend says, Osho, this, that, and I said, you keep going, you started from us. So it's great fun to talk to them after that. So what had happened is for the tombstone of Jab Charnak, they needed stones. So they just went up the nearest hill, which was St. Thomas Mount, and they just dug a part of it, put it into the ship, sent it off to Calcutta. 200 years later, look at this, huh? 200 years after the guy is buried, somebody does a, what do you say, analysis of his tombstone to find out a very rare kind of a rock found nowhere else in the world. And that is St. Thomas Mount, Pallavaram Hill, and Trisulam Hill. So they named it Charnokite. So where do you find Charnokite now? You just walk up Pallavaram Hill, pick up a stone, that is Charnokite. And if you go to the assembly halls in your Fort St. George, that is Charnokite. So just imagine the value of Chennai to the British. And I think we all have a responsibility to keep it going. So that is Charnokite for you. See the symmetry? See the train coming in? And we tried another funny experiment, which I'll show you in the next picture. This is the same location. OK, uh, it's not very clear in the project. What we did was, I'll just go back to this picture quickly. If you look very carefully, you'll find that the train is shaken a little because of the slow shutter speed. We actually calculated that shutter speed. And we used the same shutter speed for this picture. So to get that same, but you know what happened? The train was moving much faster, so it didn't work. <laughs> so <laughs> we could do that. So, and secondly, the train was on that track, whereas this train is on this track. So that angle of movement is much more. Anyway, that's the same location. There is a railway crossing here, but there is no railway crossing. It has been blocked here. But let me tell you, if you go to this place, you'll still see the road coming and stopping at the railway track. There is a road behind me, which is actually the other side. Okay, so this is that symmetry. Uh, everybody knows what the station is. It can't be any other place. Egmore, right? Okay, take a good look at this angle. Finally, we found out where he took the picture from, and it was this. Okay, so this is what Egmore is today, right? And this is the old set. 
So I'm very happy to say at least Tegmore has not changed in its character. Luckily, they still call it Tegmore instead of Furechi, this, that, 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 that. Finally, Egmore I have to search. Ah, Egmor, this is the actual name of the station, by the way. That doesn't happen, actually. Okay, so that is Egmor Station. This is what is the new avatar. And uh, can anybody guess where this is? That bridge can be a giveaway. Okay. Uh, uh, Devakar was actually giving the correct answer to the church. You mentioned the church, Devakar, St. Andrews. This is the wall of St. Andrews. You see the beautiful patterns there. And this is the Gandhi Irwin Bridge. So this train from Egmore Station, it takes a beautiful curve to go past uh, that Gandhi Irwin Bridge. It crosses the Pudupet area and then gets into Park Station. That is the curve. So we finally found this place and that's what it is today. <laughs> that's how it looks. The bridges, everything is completely changed. The church people are very afraid of, I don't know what, they've raised the height of the wall. I have a feeling it's because of the goats and the cattle, because goats go in and completely ruin the landscape. They just eat everything. And uh, I know that the gardens of the church are very beautifully landscaped, so obviously they have raised the height. So this is what it is as of now. So this is the old one and this is the new one. Then everybody can recognize this. Okay, so this is platform number seven of Central. Okay, that's a dead giveaway. So what does it look like today? This is what it looks like today. So you, from the steam, you go directly to the electric locomotive. And the same tower is there, the same arrangement is there, but everything has to change. The angle, if you notice, is slightly different because this platform was being reconstructed, as you can see. So all the place was completely rubbled. So the police themselves told me, sir, please don't come this side. So they were very kind enough to hold me while I was taking the picture. So one chap came and said, the path and so he came and held me and then finally I leaned over and took the picture. The exact angle wasn't possible for this shot. Okay, this is going to be quite an interesting picture. So this is Central Station. And I remember this cabin until as recently as 1992-95. Because all the trains were getting longer. This platform was meant for only 12 coach and 16 coach trains. Not even 16, 15 coach trains. Today, nothing less than 26 coaches per train. So they had to extend the platforms. So what does it look like today? This is the cabin through which you know all the trains are being controlled. So today's view is this. Okay, this is how it looks. So you see, the platforms are all extended and this is exactly where the cabin was. This, this, is, how, this is what it has become today. Okay, the same platform, the same curvature has not changed. Finally, uh, which I consider a fantastic picture, our great Chennai airport, you can take a look at how it was just 50, 60 years back. That is the runway. This is your uh, GST road. <laughs> can you believe GST road looked like this? And you can see two hangars there, St. Thomas Mount, and that is, the, that is the building of the Chennai airport. As a child, I remember going there to take my first flight to Mumbai. Okay, and this is the railway line, which is still there. So what does it look like today from the same spot? This is how it looks. Okay, that is, that is the... That is the thing. And uh, so this is how the airport is. The same thing, the same hill. Okay, this is the difference. Yeah, I'll just show you. There, that's how it was. Huh? Yeah, I'll tell you the reason. Good good observation, ma'am. You know why it's green? That hill, the Pallavaram, not Pallavaram, I'm sorry, the Trisulam hill is being, is used by the CSIR people for their experiments in load bearing, what do you say, structures. So they don't allow anybody up the hill. In fact, I was uh, joking with one of the security people saying, why don't you also please come to Pallavaram Hill and do something? Because that Pallavaram Hill is in a very bad state. Completely denuded. But that hill is brilliantly green. So he just smiled and said, <coughs> So because of the preservation, just look at how green it is. Yes, agreed. Yes, agreed. Yeah. So this is Chennai Airport for you. The control tower and that's your buildings. So that's the that's exactly the difference. Okay, I think I have reached the yeah. That's Manning himself. I made him stand at the same location that he stood, and he said, "Is there any small boy who will come and tug at my?" I said, "If you want, I can arrange that also." Just come say, "Naya, naya pandra," like that. So I made him stand at the same location that he took his first photograph in 1965, and then I told him, "Why don't you give me a shot as if you are taking the shot?" So he stood at the same location. He said, this is exactly where I took the photo from. So I said, I want you to pretend. And till today, he still uses a film camera. 
and he still processes his pictures and negatives all by himself. Well, he can do that, but I have a fun point which I raised with a lot of friends. What is the point of using film when ultimately you are digitizing it and bringing it back onto the screen? I guess that in certain cases you have to accept technology, where technology can help you get a better grip of everything. I think it's good that we have that. Okay, thanks. So this is the end of the presentation, but I, I'll just take about three, four minutes of your time to show a video, which I'm sure you're all going to enjoy. Uh, can I play that? Uh, because you, I, I'm not going to show the whole video. It is just excerpts so that you'll enjoy it. Uh, go to Steam Run. Yeah, that's the one. Steam Run. Yeah. IFO. Yes. Come. I'll forward it for them. Tell us. I think I'll cut out a few which I had written. Wonder to one second okay so this was actually a, a documentary that I made for the railways and this is a smaller version of it in which uh, there was a steam locomotive that was revived uh, to run as a heritage special so they told me Venkat you please come with your team and do a small documentary on that so we got into the engine we went all the way to Walaja Road it was absolute fun and uh, so it was more like a private train where ev everybody could enjoy themselves. So I'm just going to play a few excerpts. Uh, one second. Janani, can you just come here? Come, come. Uh, read out the timing so that I'll go directly. Come, come here. Maybe you can sit down somewhere. I'm so sorry. Which one? 2.55. The one thing that I wanted to attract your attention to is, in the old days of steam locomotives, one set of drivers were attached to one locomotive for the rest of their lives. It's as, as good or as bad as getting married. So the advantage was, because it was a mechanical device, that engine had to be treated very, very delicately. So the driver became so familiar with all the groans and screams and all the fatacks of the engine, that he could say, Pa, and the connecting rod Sari Lena, the Katabadan Satam or the other Paikun, the end of that familiar they became with that. So they always had their names. This was actually a sticker, but usually it's a brass plaque, and the brass plaque will have the names of the drivers, the assistants, everybody permanently fixed until either the driver retires or the loco retires. So in this case, they did very interesting. One, uh, one person from Hindu, Muslim, Christian, they got all the three of them sitting over there. So this was what we call national integration. <laughs> <laughs> if you can say it like that. Okay, next one. 420. 'outside the rest of the documentary then I said okay I'm coming in they said yes now get into the local they made some space for me and then I started shooting from inside now this is the view that a steam locomotive driver got in the old days <laughs> I'm going to go to the 
Okay, thank you. So that was the end of that presentation. I had to get that off. <laughs> okay, light, light, thanks. AJJ Sarakonam Junction, correct. So uh, I, I just showed a small cross-section of all the things that I ca collected. So there is, I, I've got a lot more footage of a diesel and then I have an electric. So there is one funny thing that happens. Uh, whenever I'm called for any documentary film for the railways, that line is sure to be closed. Okay. <laughs> so the Shengota Ponolur section, which most of you would have traveled, I went there, made a documentary. Within about uh, 15 days, that line closed. Then Arakonam Walaja, this, that same thing happened. So many places. But then I realized that at the end of it, I'm actually conserving. I create the memories. And uh, I have footage with me that is so rare and valuable that I think it will live on forever. So anyway, so I would like to thank all of you for actually enjoying. I hope you enjoyed the journey along with me. And uh, thank you, Devakar. Thanks, Intac, once again. So I hope that we will be able to uh, do that other presentation later on Indian Railways. Now, that is going to be a very nice presentation where we talk about how railways developed and what the British really intended to do with Indian Railways. <laughs> so that's what I think. Uh, sir, thanks for bringing up that, sir. But the interesting part is, uh, please, I, I'm sure that you're all going to shout at me if I tell you the truth. Okay. I, I'm, the, I am the, I'm the procrastination guy. I live up to the British way of things. And uh, Manning himself has been telling me, Pucci, I think you should be doing a book, you know. And he says, I will give you the money for it. I still didn't do anything. So I hope that after seeing all the books in uh, Nara, can I just request you to pick up? Uh, before we wind up, I'll just show you some of the prints. Uh, when I saw all the books by Intact and how much work Devakar is doing in computer, I said, this, this is nonsense. I must get the book out. So I hope that uh, I'll have a discussion with you on that and see how we can do it. Because these have to go to everybody. This can't remain inside my computer or laptop. It's not going to work. So, and uh, just to show you the larger one also. Sure. Yeah, we'll show the bigger one. Uh, I'll tell you why I don't put it up on the net, sir, because it's being misused. Uh, what happened uh, about uh, two years ago before the pandemic, we actually did that and somebody took the picture and claimed that he took the photo. And he, that time Instagram was not so famous, but social media in terms of Facebook, he got a lot of accolades and people actually said, wow, you're a great photo. Then I had to tell him, I'm sorry, we have proof that Ian Manning took the picture. So that's how dangerous social media is. And uh, people take this picture, they use it for their graphic designs and they actually earn money. My own pictures have been misused by the railways. I know what I went through. So I would prefer to keep the collection with all of you rather than put it on the net. Thank you, sir. So you see the quality of the print. So you're all welcome to come closer and take a look later. So this is the quality of the archival print that we actually put. 
And I have to share a joke with this. If you notice, uh, can you show that also? Thank you, Nara. Just show that also. Now the point is, you see Manning's, you know, uh, come, come in front so he can also take the video. You see Manning's uh, signatures and all this. And you know what happened? After I put his signature there painstakingly with my archival black colored pen and all that, somebody looked at it and said, digital away signature reporting la, nalla I said, what the hell? Then I realized that they thought I digitized his signature and embedded it into the picture. They didn't believe that Manning actually came to India for the specific purpose. Uh, Devakar, Mr. Devakar was there and he remembers this. I actually got him to sign. Well, you'll have to believe me, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the quality of the print. Now the point is after digitization and restoration, the quality of the output is so much that I can blow this picture up to the size of this wall. And still, that's what, you, the proof of that is platform number three, four, five, and six. You go to central, you'll see prints that are 20 feet by 15 feet in size. And they look exactly the same quality. So that's exactly what the print is all about. So this was part of that exhibition which we put up there. So you can see the quality. Okay, there is one, this thing that I would like to offer, which I was also discussing in the sense that if any of you is interested in these archival prints, please get in touch with me and then I'll be able to get, get you the copies. And uh, so I just wanted to, because I think if you realize the value of the print and you would like to get a copy of this for yourself, any of these, I'll tell you where to get it done and uh, me and uh, Mr. Narsiman will be able to help you with that. Yeah, can you just show that and people can see it? There you are. All these are there as it is. So this is the this is the quality of the photograph. Actually, if I can show one more as it is, then after that, this is just to show that print is still the best way to get the work done. A small mobile phone is not going to give you the same effect as this. That's why we still think, sir. Uh, I have digitized. To tell you the truth, I've been working on this project for 12 years, and I've finished 1,200. There are now 3,000 to go, so I, I hope that I live for 30 years longer to finish all of them. So out of the 1,200, I have been able to print about uh, maybe 40 or 50 of them. Because these are pretty expensive, so I won't be able to keep a collection myself because I also keep running out of money. Problem is, my internet costs more, so is it going to be Airtel or is it going to be Manning's Pictures? We have, we have a pricing, sir, exactly. But these will not be sold, these specific prints, because this is like a traveling exhibition. But these, the copies of these can be had, any size you want. You want it smaller than this, fine. You want it larger than this, fine. This is a 12 by 18. This is a good exhibition size. Smaller is fine, bigger is fine, anything is fine. But just to tell you, and thanks to all your encouragement, I hope that I'll bring the book out soon. Okay, this is a promise. Thank you so much. Okay, so, yes, ma'am. Sorry? Yes, we'll give you time for that. Let me just, I'll keep it very brief so that you get more time to interact with him. So on behalf of the Impact Chennai chapter, I thank Mr. Venkat for such a wonderful presentation. I'm sure you will agree. You would have never got to see such photographs. And for the wonderful presentation he put together, I mean, his perspective as a photographer, as a conservator, as a historian, everything he brought together so beautifully with all the duets in the beginning and Katasila Mela Talatoda with the train entering the platforms with all the celebration going on. So, and thanks to Mr. Vinket for all that. Thank you for being such a wonderful audience. I'm sure the flow will be yours. You can carry forward a lot of questions to him, put forth a lot of questions to him and get all your answers. I thank Ashwita for the wonderful venue as usual, the good tea and the snacks to begin off our talk. And then to all of you present here for being such a wonderful audience, thank you very much. And all the volunteers who always do your best to make each talk very interesting and comfortable to the talker, to the listeners and everybody present here. Thank you so much. I would, I would like to just take a few questions from you, so let's see if you can. Mm, hi, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. Very lovely lecture. Thank mm. you so much. Uh, I'm enlightened, yeah. Uh, my question is, you have, sh you have shown everything from outside of the tribe. What I'm curious about it is, was there lavatories? When did they build lavatories? Was there a birth? When did they 
uh, when did they bring uh, beds? So I wanted the internal uh, picture of yes. the trend so, I'm uh, missing. Th th that's an interesting uh, point of observation. The, I'll start with what is the idea of this presentation. We called it line side because that's what we do when we see a train. We stand, by, hopefully we stand by the side. Today they're standing right in the middle and taking selfies. We all know what the result is. So we, when we say line side, this presentation was more for the outside like he correctly pointed out. It's more from the outside. So I limited myself to that because when I said that I plan to make another presentation on Indian railways, in that presentation, I'm going to talk about all these points that you mentioned and also the fact that why the British didn't bother about human beings at all. That's it. So they really gave us a lot of trouble. And uh, the, the true innovation of comfort, like you said about the lavatories, the births. In fact, birth la vandu putting that cushion, okay? And the cushion porter they vandu namloda ICF for the invention na. Until ICF came about in 1955 and said, inna da then they started putting the cushion. Then only, so we should thank ICF for our comfort today, <laughs> actually. So I would just uh, request you, sir, that I will make a detailed effect of that because today the, the information is about the trains around Chennai, Madras, and then the outside part of it. But I have all the information and how it developed from anti, let us say human, more of humorous, anti-human attitude of the British to Today we have a Vande Bharat that is worth traveling in. You see the change. And we have the modern Batanamikina water var there. Can you ever believe that Indian train toilets could have that? Can you believe it? You know what you and I have traveled through, right? We know what all we have had. So that innovation took a lot of time and effort by Indians. The British actually didn't bother about us at all. That's it. Except their coaches in which the general manager used to travel that uh, maybe the chief engineer used to travel. There it was just like a hotel room. But for the rest of the people, it was absolutely nothing. Exactly. Which trial was this? Okay, okay. So the trial basically was the first railway line. But I should also tell you... Yes. Exactly. No, no, it was very successful. It was very, very successful. But uh, when the permission had to be applied, because you know, British Lavande, Nana, without the permission of the boss, nobody does anything. The permission didn't come at all because they were just lazy. That's all. But the first train really was from to No, no, from Chintadripet to Red Hills. Yes, sir, absolutely. No, Royapuram was the f Royapuram was the first commercial line. When you say the first railway line, Abdi Nirthinda, the first railway line. Rendu track a pote, sleeper across la pote, or a vandi at the Malawakar, which chip under the Chennai, 1832, which was 20 years before 1853. So, actually, today, today, yes, absolutely right. They still maintain the same thing. Only thing is, ticket collector, but like they were fancy term, because they said ticket collector, na, I'm nobody's. No, ticket collector is not a good thing. That's why you have a fancy word. So, what has happened? Guard and Rade has now become train manager. Apparently, guard means you won't get married because they say guard. Train guard is not a good thing. Train manager, oh, he's a manager. Oh, period post. So, they get married. This was actually told to me by the guard himself. He said, Sir, you are not a good thing. Sir, you are not a good thing. Sir, you are not a good thing. Yes. Exactly. Alla, rail chumba, rail mug the noon irkatarima. Rail mug. For obvious reasons, you know what I mean. Yes. Any other Yeah, any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, not really. The reason was because he was more interested in the line side. That's why we said line side. All his pictures would be... Now, this proved to be valuable because we could see the development of the railways from that instant to the current. Yes. And uh, personally, I might be interested in the retiring rooms, you know, the driver's running rooms and so many other aspects. But if you, if you talk about what grabs you first is the chugging train. If anybody remembers Pathar Panchali, you know the effect that it had. It, I, it had the same effect to me also uh, because I had a lot of relatives who worked in the railways, so I know that interesting side of it. 
and the thought yes so your question yeah. sorry one i'll just take that and then uh, no, let him talk and then sir i'll come back to you yes yeah uh, as far as railways in india goes uh, you already mentioned about it uh, possibly bombay seems to be the uh, larger than life image but uh, if you look at how uh, in mining is done chennai possibly has seen wider variety you had dc suburban network dc locomotives ac mm. locomotives exactly. in meter gauge yes so many things yes. i think possibly uh, maybe you should take I would, a project uh, i would add to your point by saying let us not talk about chennai let us talk about south yeah exactly so right. south uh, wait one more interesting point south especially chennai and what is now andhra pradesh so if you talk about absolutely that is why i said madras i just used the word madras because this was the madras presidency and the innovation that went on by the british actually it served their own selfish purpose we all know that <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah so the point was all the experimentation happened in india this was the land where they experimented and they took whatever they learned from here to africa to all the other colonies and that is how it started off with broad gauge so let me tell you a quick uh, point here broad gauge was where they could make the maximum amount of profit enge endu evlo saamana thookit odalam broad gauge podu uh places like uh, darjeeling and all that avaya avaya kanda narrow gauge podu so that is exactly how darjeeling narrow gauge came about they just wanted their wives to get away from the husband's work and stop nagging them so they put a railway line to darjeeling that's the actual truth that's why darjeeling line came and uh, nilgiri mountain railway came just because they wanted to get away from the heat of coimbatore so they wanted to run up there going by horseback was too long put a railway line podu anyway that is for the next presentation okay i have enough data yes So can i have just two should, one, uh, one more document, question uh, chennai as a uh, larger than life uh, true true 100% no, no yes sir just no, one question uh, and then we'll close it's okay mike mike sir oh. yes. manning uses film is he able to get a black and white film or uses i can get you black and white film tomorrow morning in chennai just go to konika they'll give you black and white film they'll even process it and print it for you uh, roll uh, roll 100% yes you want film cameras they are also available but there are two points here which i'll conclude with this one is environment considerations so much of dangerous chemicals are used carcinogenic we never realized that we were breathing in all that carcinogenic material when i used to have my developing lab back in school i used to process and print my own films ella thuli kai poduven obviously i got hooked to it that what is a drug addict mari abbi and the developer smell vandale abbi or mari irukum no wonder i was a very calm child okay and uh, the second part is you are ultimately what is the medium of today digital yeah. how do i communicate with you on the mobile phone why are not am i going to take a film roll and run after it say sir sir one option negative paakringala solla porradilla you will say sir whatsapp la anupichirunga sir you see how simple it is so if i shoot digital i process digital i pass it to you digital you enjoy it digital so that's how it goes so sometimes i'm just scratch going to say any film let it not take you you thirupi ang digital is tham panna pora thirupi instagram la tha poda pora adukku na nera ve digital camera la shoot pannalama so sometimes we'll have to embrace technology let's be clear about it <laughs> okay thank you so much uh, it has been a pleasure to meet all of you hope i'll get my second and then we'll all meet up there thank you once again thank you so much uh, how would we get in touch with you